Your puppy's got to go out for a potty break several times throughout the day and I think it's exactly the opportunity that you're missing in your puppy training. So many people overlook this, the importance of this moment. Now let's start with what I'm not doing. Number one, uh, Maple's brand new. Uh, I've never met her before. Um, one thing that I see a lot of people, a mistake I see a lot of people make when they're taking their puppy out for potty training is that they're talking to them and they're engaging with them and their puppy's meandering around. There's all kinds of distraction out here. So their puppy gets distracted and forgets why they're out there. So I'm not really going to say anything to her. I'm also not going to move around all over the place. I'm basically going to turn into a post. I'm going to try to be so boring so that she doesn't have an opportunity to get distracted and move all over the place. I'm just going to let her sniff around a little bit, maybe pick a spot. And eventually I'm hoping that she's going to have uh, to go pee or poo. The other thing I'm not going to do, this is a big mistake and it might be something that seems brand new to you, but I'm not going to reward her with a treat for going pee. Now, you know, she's kind of circling, so I think we might be pretty close here. So often people will uh, say, you know, we give your puppy a treat when they go up for a pee and that's absolutely not necessary. I want this puppy to understand that when we go outside, she's going to have a pee or a poop and she's naturally rewarded by you know, relieving her, bla her bladder or her bowels. You know, she doesn't need to be food rewarded for this because it already kind of feels good. The other thing we hear, you know, we get 500 dogs a week here in our training facility and a lot of those dogs are puppies. And we hear puppy owners that started by rewarding with food when their puppy, when they were doing potty training. Now the puppy's like scratching at the door or asking to go out when they don't even really need to go out. So now that we've finished, now that she's uh, had a little poop there, it's actually try time to work on some of the training that uh, I want you to know about. I talked about not food rewarding your puppy when they go pee, but I did bring treats out with me. And whether you uh, stuff some treats in your bait pouch or in your pocket, it doesn't really matter. What I want is I want to be ready to work on a few exercises to start building some value on me, building some value on putting in a little bit of effort with me. And this is where your puppy starts to learn how to learn. And every single potty break is a great time to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start loading value on her name. And I want you to do this at home. You're going to make it dead simple. We don't want our dogs to get distracted. We don't want our puppies to, you know, there's a million things that uh, your puppy could get distracted by when you're out in the real world. I want to make sure she's successful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this treat on her nose. I'm going to say her name and then I'm going to lure her in toward toward me. That's exactly what I want you to do at home with your puppy as well. It's, it's so simple. Watch how this goes. Get the treat on her thing. Maple, bring her in nice and close. Good girl. And try it again. I mean, there's all sorts of great distractions out here. Maple. Good girly. Nice job, buddy. And all I'm doing is I'm basically just saying her name and then bringing her in and feeding her a treat. So simple. Maple. Now this is so much better than uh, being out, letting your dog out in the yard, calling their name, hoping that they come back in. Maple. And just wondering. The, the, the challenge is that so often when people do that, new puppy owners do that, their dog stops listening eventually. You know, it's just not that interesting to come into you when they can go and sniff in the flower bed or, you know, go dig in the yard. Maple. So when you go outside each and every time with your puppy, take a couple of treats, do some luring. You know, all she has to do is follow the food. It's very donkey and carrot and it's supposed to be because right now I'm teaching her to follow food and that's going to be a great building block for the next couple of exercises. Now another thing we hear from students is that their puppy is so full of energy and it doesn't seem to matter how many times they go out and work with them, their puppy always has extra fuel in the tank. Well why not add a little bit of tug or a little bit of toy play into your puppy potty training. This is a great opportunity. Likely after your puppy goes pee or poo, they're probably going to be a little bit more energetic. You're going to seem a little bit more excited. Now I don't know if Maple's toy motivated, but if, if she's going to be toy motivated, it's going to be on the McCann Dog's puppy tug. So let's see if she wants to play with this thing. Okay buddy, you like that toy? Okay. Oh, you want to get that toy? Really, I just want to keep this animated, get her interested. She's never played with a toy like this before. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, good girl. And what I love about uh, these interactive toys, especially this one, obviously, is this becomes exciting because it's with me. This toy is only fun when she's playing with me. And this is a great way to burn off a lot of energy in a short period of time. If you're you know, headed to, to work for the next couple of hours, maybe you're work from home. You want to work on stuff like this. It takes 
you know, 30 seconds or a minute and you're gonna see, oh my goodness, she likes that toy. You're gonna see a dog that's way more tired than when we started, she really likes to tug. But I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna do like a game of tug before we work on the next exercise, which is some of the more foundational stuff in your puppy training. Look at her, she loves it. So many people are talking about wanting to take their puppy for a walk, but the thing you might not realize is that you need to train your puppy how to walk before you take them for a walk. And this next exercise is exactly how you're going to start and finish your walks. But because we have a young puppy, we can't go very far. We just want to work on some of these really simple skills. I'm going to do that donkey and carrot thing again. I'm going to put a treat on her nose and I'm going to lure her in at my side. And at the end, a little lift up and she sits. Now, imagine a world where your puppy's offering to sit in this position because you've built so much value here. I'm not saying sit. I'm not giving her any commands. I'm just starting to teach little Maple here. And look at this. I'm starting to teach little Maple here that there's value for remaining in this position. My leash is loose. She's sitting in at my side. She's doing such a great job. Wouldn't it be nice if your puppy were like, to, would default to this? Well, this is exactly how this all starts. I mean, there's a lot of distractions. You guys can't see. There's a couple dogs just off to our right here. There's lots going on and she's remaining in position. I think Maple's 11 weeks old or something like that. And I have never worked with her before, but look at this. This is how we're gonna begin and end all of our walks. And this is an exercise you can do. This is a bit of an advanced technique for those of you who are getting some success in this position. But I see a lot of students who uh, they're working with their puppy or their dog and the dog is fixated on the pocket or the pouch. You know, the dog is looking for the food. So what you can do if you're getting some success here is reward from your face directly to theirs. You can see, yes, good girly. I mean, she's looking right at me. We, I've never uh, worked with this little puppy before. We just met today and she's giving me nice attention right on my face. And all I'm doing before I feed her is bring that treat up to my nose and then rewarding her in the direct line between my face and hers. Make no mistake, this is all about the food. I just want to build value for some of these things. Like when she checks in with me, nice job, buddy. That sit in start position or sit at your side is exactly where we can begin some of this leash walking training. You know, wouldn't it be nice if when your dog was finally ready to start going on walks, if they understood to start here, it also gives you lots of control. Now, I'm not gonna take my 11 week old puppy and you're not gonna take your 11 week old puppy and go for long walks with them. But you can start at this point with three or four pieces of kibble or three or four treats in your hand. All you're going to do, again, back to that donkey and care routine, because this is a resource that the puppies naturally understand, I can keep her motivated to follow along with me. All right, buddy, let's go. And I'm just feeding her every couple of steps. When I get to my last treat, I'm gonna lure her into a sit. Okay, that one was okay. I don't love her position there. Do you, can you guys see what's wrong with that? Do, do, do you know what I might not love about the way she sat there? Let me know in the comments below. So I'm gonna turn her around. I'm gonna take her with me. I'm just gonna lure her away. I'm gonna guide her around the corner and I'm gonna try it again. I'm just gonna lure up with that nice little sit. Oh, and I got that little bum out to the side again. That's better. Much better, pal. So I really want the puppy at this point, I have so much control, I want the puppy to sit straight and sit close to me. So often, the way people are rewarding, okay, uh, has the puppy turn out to the side. And this isn't great if you're walking on a sidewalk and you get to the corner and your puppy swings out into the road. You don't want that kind of thing. You really want your dog okay, to be in close to your side. And all, that has a lot to do with where that reward placement is. But this is where we can build the foundation of it. When your puppy's really little, when you're only going eight or 10 feet, teaching them uh, the basics, the foundation, so that when they get to 16 weeks or 18 weeks, and you're working on this, you know, in a more busy, in a busier environment or in, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the real world, you're gonna have way more success because they've already figured out how to learn with you. Okay. Now that you've optimized your time outside with your puppy, it's time to optimize your time inside with your puppy. And for that, Watch this video. On that note, I'm Ken. This is Maple. Happy training.